What is up? I'm American as hell. Look at me. I'm just American. Can't get no more American -er than this. Anyways, welcome to a different style of video that I've never done on my Instagram. Um, I want to talk to you guys about something that we talk about here at Bigger Movement all the time when we're in training, um, and that is reps to failure. Um, and what reps to failure is, is meaning when you're repping something out, say let's just use bench press for example, you're repping something out and you get your last rep, how many reps do you feel like you have left in the tank? So for example, if I'm doing 10 reps, right? I have whatever weight on the bar, I do 10 reps, I feel like I can get one rep more rep or do I feel like I can get seven more reps, All right? So that is reps to failure. Somebody was holding a gun to your head, how many reps do you have left? All right, and I wanna explain a little bit about how important that is uh, pertaining to your goals. So if your goal is to maintain, stay exactly how you are, um, then your reps to failure, you'll have a lot of reps left in the tank. All right, so you might have five, six, seven reps left in the tank. And that's okay if your goals are to just stay the way that you are, if you're just exercising, right? But if you are training, there's a difference between exercising and training. Exercising is just getting movement, it's just maintaining. Training is I am training for a specific goal. I want to be leaner, I want to have more muscle mass, I want to be stronger, training for a specific event, right? Training tells us that you have a goal in mind that you are trying to reach, right? So if you're training to put on size, if you're training to put on strength or to, to gain strength, um, the reps to failure need to be closer to one to two reps to failure. So going back to the bench press, if I get my last rep on bench press, I'm going to 10 reps and I get my 10th rep and I say, I could maybe get one, maybe two more reps. That's where you want to rack it, right? That's a good spot to be in for growth, for strength growth as well, for strength progress as well. Um, so I'm going to show you guys, give you guys a little example with these, with these uh, dumbbell incline chest supported rows, kind of let you see what that looks like. Because a lot of people don't realize what that actually looks like, right? We've had many people here that have come in that have been doing their workouts or whatever, and they didn't realize how hard it should actually be until one of the coaches was spotting and was like, whoa, that was way too easy. Get a couple more reps. And they get done and they're like, man, it's supposed to be that hard? Yes, it's supposed to be that hard. If you want to get stronger, if you want to look better, put on more muscle, burn some more fat, yes, it should be that hard. So without further ado, let's show you guys what that looks like. So my goal here is 10 reps. And I'll show you what it looks like here. Four, five. Now, if I was trying to maintain, I'd drop it. But I'm trying to get fucking jacked. So, I'm gonna wrap out. Two, three, four, five. Okay, that was ten. Honestly, I have more reps left in the tank. I feel like I got about seven left. So, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Ugh, 15. That's where I want to be. I feel like I actually did something. That shit was hard, right? So hopefully that gave you guys a little bit of insight on how hard the reps should be, okay? You should be struggling to get your last couple of reps. You should need a spotter. If your goal is strength progress, if your goal is physique, putting on muscle, um, those reps need to be hard, right? So unless, of course, you're in a deload week, then they won't be that hard. So... Anyways, hope this was helpful for you guys. Um, keep crushing it, keep working hard, keep getting after it, and we'll see you next time.